we take a look at the brand new Barracuda Arena and the expansion at Shark's Ice at San Jose. Right now, this is Teal Town Live. Good evening, everyone. It is August 26, 2021. We welcome you to this edition of Teal Town Live here on our YouTube channel. If you want to be part of the show, here's how you do it. Chat with us and fellow hockey fans on the page or the app. Of course, follow us on the social, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Reddit, Discord, and find everything at tealtownusa.com. I'm Eric Kerr alongside AJ Strong. AJ, enjoying the uh, lovely... Giants win as they swept the Mets. How are you, bud? Doing all right. It, the torture is back, but sorry. Right. <laughs> no kidding, right? <laughs> torture is indeed back for the Giants, but, uh, you know, a year ago, I remember we were taking pictures of, you know, little spot that used to be like an extra parking lot for the San Jose Giants and for Sharks Ice. I mean, that was literally a year ago for you know uh, for everything and now within a year i mean i can't believe it aj th this is what it looks like now i mean well in in a year that's what it's going to look like but in a, in one year they've built that up so much it's unbelievable yeah it's funny how fast things can get built when there's a little money behind it <laughs> <laughs> uh. so within one year uh, they've gotten to this Part of the uh, building process for their new Barracuda Arena and the expansion to Sharks Ice. Of course, uh, in a year or so, this is what they expect it to look like. We'll see what, it, what it's going to be in uh, at this moment. Let's go on the tour, essentially, here. So, basically, you're looking inside this arena, uh, you know, essentially about a halfway finished with this. And, uh, you know walking in you're going to be walking in from the front you know uh where you're seeing this picture is the main entry point you know there's going to be like a little merchandise stand and ground level concourse you know they'll have seven concession stands you know two premium club levels bathrooms there oh they're gonna have bathrooms thank god yeah thank god. i was i was worried i was worried <laughs> Yeah, they're going to have, and as opposed to the Shark Tank where it's, you know, the concourse is like in between the the top of the lower bowl and the bottom of the upper bowl, this is on ground level. So you're going to come right in to the yeah, building. It's a moving video here, so yeah. it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's uh, pretty nice, fun. Uh, it was fun to go on this tour. I'm sorry you missed it, but, uh, you know, I, I can't wait till they have us back to uh, once it's all completed. But uh, you can see that's the entryway there, uh, you know. But that's that's basically the main entryway, you know, from like the San Jose State parking garage. And if you're familiar with the area, um, San Jose State picked up uh, like a 1500 gar garage uh, for, you know, Spartan Stadium, for the San Jose Giants, and uh, now with this uh, Barracuda Arena. But it's going to be nice, and, and it's going to be a nice, simple walk. It's not going to be as long as, like, say the uh you know if you're coming from san pedro to the shark tank for sure so that's on a that's on the ground level and then uh you know as we we'll we'll kind of work our way to the left a little bit here but uh as we turn you know this is the view from one of the club areas it's going to have about 24 seats with a uh great you know a great view to watch the CUDA and, and apparently it's going to be where they're going to have the penalty boxes. So I, I can't see any problem with that happening with in the club seats. <laughs> uh, you know, it'll be the great way to watch the CUDA beat the crap out of the silver Knights. Hey, Felix, good to see you. Um, but the concourse should be roomy. I mean, it's going to be spread out. There should be plenty of area in the, the seating capacity for this place is about 4,200. But um, as we pull up to the cor back corner of this rink, uh, this will be the entryway right around here uh, where the, you know, for the uh, visitors to enter in. Their locker rooms currently, the CUDA dressing room area, that will be, 
you'll you'll see that later on in a bit but that's the view right now as uh the visitors will come through and that visitor locker room is currently the cuda locker room per se uh and that's where you're going to see that little hole right there hey kevin curs put your mask back on you know uh but it that's that's going to be the little hallway that, that leads over to where they're going to be going uh for the visitors uh, as as we wake, make our way around, there's plenty of guys on the uh, and girls, I should say as well, uh, on the uh, construction crew. But uh, to see this in a year, AJ is uh, unreal. No, I look forward to uh, to seeing how this is going to go. But uh, you know, I looking at at all of this. I mean, I do have a few questions. Okay. <laughs> um, first off. Uh, that's a terrible looking bar. We need to fix that. <laughs> that's just abysmal how somebody would allow a bar to look like that. <laughs> but then again, they do play Sandstorm a lot. So I guess hey. I, but, uh, I want to know though, based on like, I get, look, the Barracuda need their own barn. It's gotta be tough playing in a cavernous SAP blackout curtains are down. You've got half the blower bowl blacked off because it's unfortunately you just don't draw a lot of fans there. I would assume that this experience is hopefully going to draw so, a few more fans. But the one thing that does kind of stick out to me a little bit is the location of this. Yeah, it's great for, uh, you know, being part of this massive iceplex facility. I'm hoping that this has uh, a little bit of a buildup for the surrounding area because there's nothing around there. It's, you know, yeah, there, there's Municipal Stadium or whatever the hell it's called this week. There's <laughs> San Jose State's Stadium. There's a parking garage. There's not a place to perhaps grab a taco and a beer before or after a game, you know, or a place to wind down. You You have Stanley's. Right. Maybe, you know... I know that there's there's some space available for lease and whatnot. Maybe they say, hey, what if we were to, you know, add one more sports bar or some give, give fans an option of a place to hang out before or after a game? Yeah, and I, I'm sure they're also thinking that the new sports bar they have, plus Stanley's, uh, mm -hmm. that they're they're banking on that everybody goes in afterwards. Uh and like you said, the garage has 1,500, you know, spots, you know, 600 out back. So you're looking at 2,100. So if everybody carpools, we'll be in good shape. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, and, but let's let's be honest. You know, 4,200 seats. Uh, you know, what what are the Barracuda draw on a Tuesday? You know, five 600 fans. So I don't think that the parking situation should be much of a problem. Yeah. You know, maybe under, I'm sure opening night. Yeah. You know, maybe there's a, as we've seen at SAP, there's a few times where they break out some sort of uh, promotion right. that fans get a little amped up for, and they want to come down and get some, I will say the one kind of disappointing thing, uh, with the, like, I love everything about this. Uh, but I do find it a little disappointing that I feel like this would have been a great opportunity for the Sharks to perhaps build, uh, not necessarily a museum, but yeah. some sort of space where they could have featured, you know, whether it's original, you know, the original, like just even doing a, a display of all the jerseys that have happened over the course of Sharks history, you know, the from the Something. inaugural jersey, throwing up uh, the Kansas City Blades and the th the Wooster and and just all the hit the Barons, just Kentucky the as well, history. Yeah. Of, yeah, just to feature that history, um, you know. And let me put it this way: did, did you were at games at the Cow Palace? Yes. Yes. Okay. I mean, I remember seeing the Spiders <laughs> there. I remember seeing the Bulls there, and you know, mm -hmm. one of the things that I remember seeing there was a beautiful glass display that had a bunch of different, you know, historical 
hockey things from the seals to it's just it would be nice to see something where you could change it out once a month or something you know pull some stuff right. in you know and put out some other stuff like oh that's the stick that Nabby used to score against Vancouver or the you know there's the puck that that Nolan pointed at in the 97 All-Star game you know like I just feel like that's one thing that I think the Sharks kind of fail at is uh, calling out their history a little right. bit more and, and they should uh you know first off Mitch Amaya, our friend Mitch Amaya, actually was the one who set that that bull set up at the Cow mm-hmm. Palace, which was really go. cool. And, and and trust me, I think he has a boatload of stuff between the three of us. We can donate a bunch of stuff that they can borrow for all that <laughs> easily. D- donate? No, loan? Perhaps. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> that, good point. Good point. For a small fee. Yes. <laughs> but they should and hopefully and they are still saying their graphical elements they're still working on so it'll be a matter of time before you know the, they they should get that and, and find some way to and to, to include that in my mind yeah i would like to see them incorporate something is there was there any talk of uh posting up a led board outside like they have outside sap on santa clara well you know they had uh if we go back to to you know they when going back to these uh pictures here let me get to uh to this here you know i mean you see the graphic that has bernsey and LeBanc on there i'm sure they could do something with it i mean that's i right mean if that's the main entrance if that's like an led thing yeah I mean, exactly if that's facing tent, yeah, you know, and, and basically facing uh, the hockey repair, right? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that would be a good start. I mean, you would need at least something because, look, this is going to obviously host the CUDA games. It's going to host, uh, you know, other games when it's not in use by the CUDA. Right. But I think the Sharks would be, uh, you know, missing huge opportunity if they didn't consider this venue for you know, other things like uh, you know like there's the San Jose Civic Auditorium I don't know what that holds but I, maybe a couple thousand but where the uh, media stuff was held for the when the All-Star game. game was here in 2019 and that's that's a venue that has concerts from time to time and there may be shows where it's like well the Civic's maybe too small, but SAP is too big. You know, this venue might be the Goldie or, you know, the, the, the just right, the Goldilocks thing where it's like, Oh, this would be perfect for insert, you know, event here. I still say that a perfect idea for this would be to, uh, feature the fan fest at this venue next year, you know, give everybody an opportunity to kind of mill around, and and check it out for the first time and help drive some traffic there. But you did touch on it though. There's it's going to be a lot of cars. In fact, maybe that's that would be the proper way to do it. Is yeah, test it out by having Fan Fest there Something and see like that. Yeah. just how much parking is an issue. All of a sudden, <laughs> wait a minute, I know parking was an issue. Why am I out on in center field or on the pitcher's mound? <laughs> but, but, Right, uh, that yeah. that's gonna be the curious one when when this all goes down uh, in in the fall of 2022 for sure. Uh, we can get back to some of this. So yeah, as much as we made fun of the of the sandstorm and and yes, they should be playing that a lot more. Honestly, this is the East Side Bar uh, that they have going uh, behind the back of the net. Um, I it, it's pretty pretty nice it's kind of like a miniature version of that bar and in the club that we we used to uh do our check-ins from for after dark i think it's going to be a really sharp spot for it uh and, and well you know i know for you you can't go wrong with the beer absolutely <laughs> especially but it makes me wonder though if if this is the quote unquote like the club level bar i would hope that they'll have some uh, a, de- a decent selection more than just you know the the Colorado Kool-Aid and the occasional Molson like maybe we'll have some couple good uh good options, couple good IPAs on tap or something. I could I could see that, but 
Then again, though, you still got to free up those taps for when they do those, uh, what, dollar dogs and $2 beers. True. Well, although the concession stands, I think, can be that. You can do your little fancy craft, you know, beer here. So uh, Jonathan Becker, John Gustafson, uh, Richard Roca, uh, if you are watching, uh, AJ would like to have a word with the beer selection at the bar. Just yeah, I, I just want control of one tap. That's it. <laughs> That's all. Let me choose. And I'm telling you, it will, it will sell better than most of the stuff you're going to select. I'll tell you right now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, and here's the view from, from that bar here. I mean, when that's completed and you're right behind the net, I mean, just think if you're an opposing netminder and you're, you're having... A bunch of drunk assholes behind you. <laughs> <laughs> right. But that's not the only thing. So while there is a side entrance from, you know, Shark's Ice, there will also be a back entrance. You can actually come from the back entrance into straight into the uh, east bar here. So you're saying you rear. Well, I was going to say, um, you know, that that's the East Club bar, you know, uh, the main barracuda team store is gonna be come on eric move it over we'll be just the behind it you know then this is like where guest services will be where housekeeping it's their entryway from behind the arena they call it they call it the back energy activation which you know they've never really had a, a back <laughs> entrance per four mm. but, so, there's, but there's gonna be an actual team store yeah so uh, let me here i'll actually um nice. hi sonia right here Right where it just goes blur. That's where the big t Barracuda team store will be. Mm hmm. So, uh, definitely a lot of merchandise activations. There'll be two merchandise stands. There'll be a little bit smaller one, I guess, in the main entrance. The larger one will be around here. Uh, Groovy. So, uh, moving onward. Uh, this is the entryway. This is going to be kind of like the main entryway for everybody the Zamboni, the referees, uh, you know, like. Where frenzy will come on, um, you know. I mean, this is just like coming out of the if if you were looking at it from here, like the uh, the third corner that we've been into, uh, and then panning around. That's you know, if they're gonna have special events or the zamboni or everything, it's gonna come through that right door on the right. Uh, Richard Roca that you see there in the black uh, hard hat, he's the general manager of Sharks Ice now. Uh, and he's standing in front of where the Barracuda will come out. And that's going to be the Barracuda locker room for everything. They'll practice on this rink going forward. Uh, so they'll have one home, and uh, it's going to be a really nice place. And, and then we will uh, head into the uh, Barracuda locker room. With the player locker room, we have the stick rack, which is important for hockey. Uh, we have medical. In the event someone needs medical attention, it's immediately off the ice, which is really convenient. No, Shark uh, cold tub, GRC we have a 53 in the chat uh, saying uh, this really isn't a good spot. Uh, the closest and shopping center I'm aware of that's close is the plant, which gear. is, yeah, a little bit away. I mean, and yeah, I can see that, but it's also a hop, skip, and a jump into the Willow Glen area, which their downtown has some, you know, pretty nice... Play, my favorite pizza place, Vivos. Hashtag no free ads. But they, um, As you take a look at the uh, barracuda no, no, no. locker room. It's, once they get, you know, I mean, it's going to be a spacious dressing room once they clear everything out. But yeah, uh, Shaka, you know, it's not the greatest spot in the world, but I mean, it's it's definitely doable. I mean, uh, was it Tully's right nearby by the, you know, the fairgrounds and there's a lot of stuff there. Well, uh, but the maybe they're banking on having everything, having you, just, you know, just get everything at the arena. A, a thing to remember, <laughs> go back and look at what a dump of an area China Basin was back in 1998. Exactly. <laughs> 97. And so if you build something that's, that's cool enough and, you know, the, all of a sudden, it can have impact on the surrounding areas, and then somebody will come along and say, "Hey, you know what? Maybe this is a cool place to build a little sports bar." And you know, because there's there's some industrial 
things around this area. Maybe they would like a, a little place to knock one back at lunchtime or, you know, grab a, a, a grilled cheese or a steak sandwich or a taco or whatever. So <laughs> it remains to be seen because I think it would be a solid benefit for both the San Jose Giants and the Cuda. You know, if someone maybe came oh, yeah. along and said, hey, we want to. We want to work out something where we can build a little, a little something, something here on this corner of like center and Alma or whatever, and then off you go. And, and like you said, it'd be beneficial for not just Sharks Ice, you know, San Jose Muni, Spartan Stadium, just in that general vicinity. You know, it'd be nice to have something somewhere. Yeah. So. That was the Barracuda locker room. Uh, so that's pretty much the first floor of everything going on there. We went upstairs to the second floor, and uh, you know, there's about five thousand square feet of office space. But more so than that, uh, it's where the coaches and you know most of the uh, staff for the Barracuda will will uh, operate from. And this picture right here is like their film room. You know, where they can recap film uh, footage and everything. I'm I'm going to go on a limb and say the Sharks don't have something like this. Um, but uh, it'll also be like the press room afterwards uh, for such. But uh, to say that the Sharks couldn't use this when they need to, since they're going to be practicing there too. True. True. You know, so as we uh, go through, go through and we're in the coach's room here and then you make your way around to uh you know to the film room there uh we'll get to the second deck in the entire concourse there where you where it wraps around uh this is where you'll you'll have like the dj sit and, you know the press will sit you know us shang kurz you know all of us there um and with the with the five thousand square feet, you know, AJ, we can maybe get a good deal and have our have a studio there for us, right? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I'll start the GoFundMe right now. Right. <laughs> so uh, making making our way around here, uh, so there'll be about uh, on this second deck will be where the suites are, the lodge suites, uh, and of course the media. You know, members, we see uh, the construction workers, you know, getting getting this stuff on here. Uh, a boatload of people in, in this tw uh, this tour. So pardon the people getting in the way here. But, uh, you know, honestly, you know, uh, for for the suites, this is pretty nice. And they'll have an exclusive way to get up uh, upstairs. Obviously, there'll be an elevator elevators up the yin yang. But, uh, you know. From this vantage point, it's pretty darn nice. I would imagine. That seems like the, I mean, I'd be uh, looking into grabbing a suite at least once for a game just to enjoy the experience. Yeah, I mean, that that just looks pretty sweet for everything. Uh, <laughs> Felix saying, going to need more than the Super Chats for every show. <laughs> that for sure. Yeah, right? Right? So. Man. No, that. I'm 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 digging this. I'm gonna uh I can't wait to see this once this gets uh the you know the full on uh, bleacher seating in there. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Um once you can start getting a look at the, the, the stairs and, and how that's all gonna work out. But yeah, when you see it from that regard, um so that is a little interesting. so you'll come out midway and then, yeah, you won't have access up to the suite, up to that top level from there. Interesting. Right. And we'll get to that, that section up in the teal. Uh, that's that's going to be office space as well. So we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. But, you know, moving onward to a view that, you know, uh, if you followed this whole story, and we've been following it since day one here on Teal Town USA and on the website, uh, damn near broke the story. But pretty, go ahead. yeah, I know, right? Um, you know, uh, the, the renderings here, and then uh, for for funsies, you know, that's that's the rendering there, and that's basically the look you're gonna get from there. 
Um, so on that second deck, you're going to have six to eight people in the lodge boxes. You're going to have 12 suites in the theater box, which will be directly diagonally across from here. But uh, honestly, if you're, if you're doing one of the lodge boxes or, or the suites, and yeah, it's going to have catering and such. I mean, that's pretty sweet, dude. Yeah, whip it out. I'd be, I'd be down to uh, have a little a little soiree at a CUDA <laughs> game, you know, get a uh, few peeps together and just go, you know, take take in a game and and just enjoy being in a in a brand new venue. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty sweet. A couple more angles as we made our way around the uh, the second deck bowl. <laughs> and for those of you listening on audio, uh, you, <laughs> this was one that you probably need to uh, watch on YouTube. Right. Yeah, definitely. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel and, of course, ring that bell. So when we do go live, you can uh, get notified for sure there. But, I mean, the angles here are, are pretty sweet. I know they took some time in making sure that, you know, the sight lines aren't that bad. I mean, so you can't complain about anything, but you know, it's it, it's probably a little easier to make sure sight lines for forty two hundred seats are the you know probably easier to figure that out than you know nearly eighteen thousand. Right. But uh, no, I dig this. The only thing that's missing is I don't know a skylight. <laughs> you would think, right? You yeah. you would think that they would have something some sort of light in there. I mean, honestly with with them not having all the uh, walls up, I mean, it's and you'll see later on, it's pretty uh, nice view of the city. And what side is uh, Frenzy repelling from? Uh fre <laughs> Frenzy, why why are we that's not showing me. Well, damn it. Why is it not showing? Me? Oh, oh well. It's uh It'll be on, let me get it back here. So we're on this side. So on here, you know, the whole, let me get back, get this back here. Come on, you piece of crap. So from this angle, uh, where that uh, yellow uh, forklift and this blue forklift on the far side will be the home and away benches. The near mm -hmm. side where the gentleman is on the left, that's where the, the you know, the timekeeper and the penalty box will be. Apparently there's also a broadcast area in there. I don't you know when Hold on, are you saying Nolenberger is gonna be like ice level? It's an that option. Does, uh, it doesn't seem very <laughs> like a it doesn't seem like a great idea <laughs> just because of your limited visibility. Yeah, but there's I mean, all... if there's a second person, you know, if there's going to be a second person, like a color person uh, as part of the broadcast on occasions or something, then yeah, sure, you know, give them give them that option. But uh, as far as I know, no, the only only person that should be in that area is, uh, you know, the guy who keeps mispronouncing all the names. <laughs> and that's not Nolan Berger. That's for damn sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh well, here's um, a view of one of those you know, 12 suites in the building. I mean, it, it's kind of like a miniature, literally a miniature version of what they have at the tank. Maybe even considered close to like one of the penthouse suites. Yeah. Uh, I mean, dig it. Dig it. I'm, a, I'm assuming that it's, uh, are they going to just w have one monitor? Or are they going to have two like the like the suites at, at the tank? It, you know, they, they didn't go into specific detail, but I would think they might have more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but maybe just for the rendering, they only showed one on there. Hmm. Well, and the other thing that's going to be real interesting is those rare occasions when the CUDA and the Sharks both play home games. Right? Right. And so now this, the, there could very well be a time or two when the CUDA and the Sharks are playing at home uh, at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, rather than the CUDA being pushed up to one o'clock and then ruining the ice for the for the Sharks game later. Uh, so, yeah, it would be nice if you had at least. Well, I mean, one TV, as long as it gets the Sharks game, if you happen to be at the CUDA game, too. Right. 
You know, and how great would it be then if at least for those CUDA games, boy, it'd be, it'd be really cool if the if the Sharks could, you know, beam that closed circuit feed from the CUDA arena over to SAP. So if you're in a suite there, that's an option for you to watch as well. Oh, absolutely. That'd Just be very ha- cool. That'd be really cool. You know, you, you know, now that you say that beaming in a closed circuit thing, you know, it'd be really cool, AJ. Hmm. And it depends on how big the uh, the scoreboard might be. This would be nice for a viewing party. Oh, this would be fantastic for a viewing party. You know. Yeah. No, be, I'm, I'm totally down with that. The The other issue, well, not an issue, but when I, when I look at this, it yeah, those TVs. I'm wondering if... And look, I get it. Like the sharks, that's 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 your money maker. That's you know, that's that's what you're there to promote. But once this arena arena actually is open to the people and they're having games, I wonder if we'll finally see any promotion whatsoever at Sharks games or on Sharks broadcasts. Because I remember, you know, that first year that the Barracuda were in San Jose. You heard a couple mentions. I remember seeing like a commercial once or twice during the first like 10 games and then nothing. And that's the way it's been ever since. Yeah, And I get it because they don't want to cannibalize their ticket sales for the Sharks. I get that. But you have to, you know, if you want to draw people to something, you have to at least let them know what's going on. Oh, absolutely. And and this rink is going to be brand new. You know, uh, it might be a tease to what the Sharks might want to do to update the tank, perhaps. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Good one. Yeah. And, and there's, it, you know, Kathy saying it right on. Hopefully the Sharks will do more to advertise the Barracuda again. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it it's it'd be huge for them to do that. I mean, and like and like she said, also, might as well brag about the new barn for crying out loud. Absolutely. Yeah. Give, you know, give these guys some pub. And especially when this thing opens, you know, if you're lucky, uh, there's going to be some guys worth, worth taking a look at. You know, you, you hopefully yeah. you'll have Eklund out there and Ozzy and Robbins and, you know, you got Merkley Bordolo. guys. Yeah, Bordalo guys that are, uh, that should be excited. Well, let's be honest. If this barn is open, and Merkley is still here, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but either way, like there should be some exciting guys to watch when this thing cracks the doors. Yeah. So uh, absolutely, hmm. you know, <laughs> the one the one you won't see here, I can guarantee you, is Dolan. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo, oh boy, yeah, yeah, oh, it, sharks last. Go ahead. Stefan wanting to know: Will there be coffee? <laughs> somebody's a fan of rock and i would hope so i you know they you know john gustafson was mentioning you know that's where the duncan stand was going so who knows it might have a coffee cart you, the... you can't have a duncan if they don't serve coffee that's just it, it's like that would be like a mcdonald's that doesn't serve a big mac right yeah so <laughs> If if that's the case yeah then i would imagine there should be some sort of coffee stand and hey you know what the SAP has been closed essentially for a year for hockey fans and all that. For all we know, there might be, you know, so maybe one of the the smaller little venues on the concourse popped out or they replaced one of the uh, those little – I don't even know what those things are called. You know, for the longest time on the concourse, uh, there was, you know, not a lot. They didn't want to impede traffic or whatever, and then all of a sudden, like, the cheesesteak thing opened up right. when it used to, when it used to be like you would get that from the classics thing. All of a sudden, they made cheesesteak its own thing, and then they opened another thing and another. And so they they got a lot of stuff up there. It wouldn't surprise me if they replaced one of those with coffee, <laughs> or at the very least, they should add some sort of coffee function, uh, something to the uh, the south bar above the entrance. That might it's work. like you're you're going to allow people to congregate there after games anyway. You might as well give them the option, right? You know, multiple options keep them in the butts in the area. You know, exactly. Right. So, moving onward. Uh, so we we stay in that corner, and that's where the uh, where the uh, theater 
suite comes into play. I mean, it's going to be 12, 12 seats. It's got a, you know, f- you know, larger than the basic, you know, standard suite there. Holy shit. I mean, Looks like it has its own private bar. It might. Oh, man. We're talking theater seating? Oh, dude. All right. There. Wait, what was that? Say it again. Give me a foot massage while I'm in that seat and I'm and I'm and I'm buying season tickets for this. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh man, wait, let me go back to that to that spot because it had a little insert there. Look at that insert on the bottom corner there. Uh, yeah, that looks like a bar, bud. That's yeah, in the back with the little teal background. Yeah, down right? yeah, down on the corner there. It uh yeah, that that's a that's a fucking bar, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, but it, yeah, I mean, if you got what two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, twelve theater seats, and but yeah, you better put something in there, right? Hey now, yeah, and uh, so Teal Town USA Watch Party, sign me up. Oh yeah, yeah. That's no, I think we'll definitely I mean, we be had, doing a group game there. Yeah, I was gonna say we had. Uh, we had the Teal Town USA Day at, at the tank. We're definitely going to have to do one here at the at what I'm calling right now the fishbowl. The fishbowl. <laughs> and, and we should say naming rights are available for the arena. No, uh, of course they are. So uh, we'll <laughs> all, I'll also add on to the GoFundMe the uh, to uh, make uh, the donation. Maybe for just like one year, we'll call it the Teal Town USA Arena. Right. Yeah. Uh, but or at least name at least name one of the uh, the the suites or the luxury boxes. It'll be the Teal Town USA box. Hey, now I'm down All for right. that. Uh, so there is a third floor to the building. Uh, I mean, granted, there's only two floors to the arena, but there is a third floor, and and it's this view from from the corporate space. They're going to open up. They're going to open up the uh, ice view. They're going to have a a way for you know the business that or businesses that take that fifteen thousand square foot space to it. Uh, you know they're going to have a nice view from there. They're also going to have you know views of San Jose. They can also watch the San Jose Giants game on the back end of of this. Uh, I'm I'm shocked that Google hasn't bought this already. <laughs> right? It's already it's already built. That's all you need, Google. Take that, please. Seriously. Oh, but I, I, Yeah, I'm shocked. But it begs the question, hey, Nick Nolenberger, where's your office? With Nick Nolenberger here at uh, his new digs, you got a new office picked out yet? Yeah, I'm, ho- I'm hoping they're going to put me, I mean, find me something. I, I, like I said just a moment ago, give me the closet. I don't care. So it's just, it's incredible. It's but, incredible. But you can't wait to get into these places. Oh, that's no disrespect to the Shark Tank, but this is pretty nice. Yeah, I, I look at the Shark Tank as being, we're so fortunate to be able to play out of that facility, but to get our own space, I mean, this is going to be a game changer, right? We're going to be able to build build something that we weren't able to do before. So there's just a buzz and excitement around all of this, and uh, I'm, I'm part of that as well. I just cannot wait. Oh, it's going to be awesome. So they still haven't found an office for Nolan Burger yet, for crying out loud. Come on, people. Um, there's got to be at least one porta potty that's free outside. <laughs> He's, fine. He's fine. He's a tough cat. Uh, good spirit, Nick Nolenberger. Thank you for doing that, bud. Appreciate it as always. Uh, looking forward to uh, jumping into the re- or in the reef with you throughout the season for sure. Uh, but you know, there's that there's that space up there. So there's fifteen thousand square feet of space but uh getting back to the to the second floor uh you know by the theater suites for a spot that will link the arena to well the newest hockey bar in the building uh along with being in the jumping over to the current building and more uh we'll check it out right here i think we have sound up on this but yeah it's the uh they're calling it calder's sports bar um yeah, this is a little bit, but in the left where you see that black bar, to the left of that will be access to uh, the Barracuda Arena, uh, lodging space all around here. You, uh, also to the left of that, I'll show you in a sec, the uh, 
the the other rink that's being built, rink number five. Uh, that window to the right, AJ, will be a access point where you can watch the Sharks practice in there as well. Now, is is this the Calder Bar? Is this something that's going to be similar to Stanley's, where it will be open, like whether there's a game happening or not? It should be. Nice. Yeah. Should be like they said they they will have they said they will definitely have it open for um, sharks practices uh, when people are on rink five at at the uh, maybe for junior sharks or you know pickup hockey or or whatnot. I mean, so just basically very close to what Stanley's does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dig it. I mean, like like, it. like the comparison with the uh, north and the center rinks. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it'll be open like that, but uh, a quick look at what they have up, and I think we got sound up for this one as well. Space viewing to a shark practice because currently it's not. So these bay the windows we're seeing will allow any patron to see within the, the shark facility, shark practice. So that's a really cool element we uh, we added here. Behind you, you'll see another recreational rink. So this will be used by everyday community uses. Uh, kids, adults, and the like uh, have a couple of rows of seating, but again, again, parents can hang out, enjoy, but also see it with the activity on the ice. So, to the left of everybody there, that's the fifth rink going in, and you can see that little red striped area that's cordoned off. That's how you would get to the Barracuda Arena. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, to the right side, as as Richard was explaining, you'll be able to peek into Sharks practice over there as well. Gotcha. Nice. Yeah, and you should be able to get food there. They haven't decided whether the food will be there or they'll get it in from Stanley's from over there. So you'll be uh, really sharp. Uh, yeah, they better have some solid food options. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Pump up the menu, boys. So that there's the fifth rink. So they're adding two more rinks. One's the Barracuda Arena. This one is the fifth rink. But... What they're also doing here is this is a workout area and this is a study area for the junior sharks. And that's the fifth rink from there. So, wow. so I mean, that's going to be something that's unmatched in, for any rink in Northern California to have that rink and then to have a workout area, which they kind of already have one. In, in the regular or in the original facility, but to have that a workout area and a study area just designated for the junior sharks is pretty awesome. That's that's unbelievable. Yeah, I can't wait to see this is when this is all done. I hope that similar to what they did, you know, th- almost thirty years ago. Uh, when the Sharks did an open house before they had actually ever played a game or held an event there. Yeah. Uh, I would love to see the Barracuda, to, you know, them do some sort of an open house uh, that just kind of says, hey, take a tour of everything that we got going on here, all the new stuff that we did. And I think it's also a way to, to potentially get, you know, maybe get some more people on the ice, maybe yeah. sell some Cuda ticket packages because it's like, hey, theater seats, you know, uh, mani pedis and and foot massages are extra, (laughs) but hell yeah. Hell yeah. So a lot of this is added on to the four rinks. Uh, Of course, there's cutouts that you're going to see for practice and such, but this part was interesting. This is the last part of it all is this. This is the tunnel. So if you've been at... Sharks Ice before. This is back uh, where they had the back entrance and where they had, um, you know, where the trucks would drop off the equipment for everybody. So this is kind of interesting here in the sense that looking at here, so where Richard is pointing to, that's the docking area. Uh, Back behind this wall where the two gentlemen on the right are were, uh, hi Sonia, shout out to Sonia Tidinko, great to great to finally meet her uh in person uh will be the well what's currently the barracuda locker room 
uh, will be the visiting locker room uh, there. And moving onward to this, I mean, I mean the docking area, you're going to have a bunch of stuff. This is where the Sharks will, will enter into their portion of the rink because their rink is still, you know, the south the south rink there. But what's interesting is is that they'll come walking away into there. So picture if you're an opposing AHL player, you're walking that far just to get to the rink. Yeah, kind of a dick move. Yeah. So <laughs> wait, let me pull it back here just a little bit. Where that that uh, lift is is where the Sharks uh, rink is. Mm -hmm. where the Sharks uh, dressing room will be. But keep working your way around. You know, you're going to have a spot for the Zamboni and everything. But I don't know if you could see it just here, but that far door all the way down. So to the, to the so where Sonia is and where the guy with the black. Uh, yeah, get yeah. to it. What is it? That's the arena. <laughs> That's how far the visiting team has to walk to get to to get on the ice. Yeah, fuck those guys. <laughs> I mean, like seriously, um, and, and yes, uh, Kathy didn't Gustafson say they did that on purpose though for the visiting team? <laughs> yeah, of course. So, and, and then this is the fifth rink here. Uh, we saw it from up top, but that's the fifth rink. It'll uh, it'll have uh, all kinds of stuff. So that's pretty much everything. You can see they'll have a boatload of. Uh, Locker rooms also have uh, gender-neutral bathrooms as well uh, to help everybody out. But, you know, a little bit of seating up there. So it's going to be a really, really solid place. And uh, about a year away, I mean, there's going to be some stuff that they're going to have to finish complete just in time before Sharks training camp. But, uh, you know, to think two years ago, AJ, or a year ago, it was just dirt. Yeah, and no, they they definitely seem to uh, <laughs> have exceeded the schedule. Yeah, even with COVID. So. Yeah, which you don't you don't see uh, that you know usually it takes a little longer than than what is advertised, but right. this has happened real quick. Now looking at this uh, blueprint, if you will, the overhead view, uh, I'm wondering where are the players going to park now. They'll be in the back, so you know. Yeah, so off of rink five. Yeah, off of rink five, in the, and to get they'll go into the tunnel and get into rink three, which is where the sharks practice. You know. Yeah, uh, but it's just uh, I'm wondering, like, you know, you see that dotted black line kind of separating the parking between municipal and the iceplex. Uh, it just makes me wonder: is that where fans are going to have to go now if they want to try to be uh, autograph hounds? Yeah, and Kathy, you know, mentioning the same thing. Where did players park? Is this the end of hanging around asking for autographs after practice? Remains to be seen. I mean, it, I I could I would have to think they have something set up. You know. Uh, yeah, I mean, it once you know, hopefully, once we get beyond COVID or whatever, they they have some sort of protocol. Uh, because to be you know, to be honest, I'm um. <laughs> I'm kind of like wondering, um, how the fuck are they going to deal with a fan fest this year? I can't imagine they can have one. That's the curiosity part. They got to fig. I'm sure they're figuring out something. Mm, well, see, I remember them last year at one point, like sending out questionnaires about like the idea of a virtual fan fest. Right. And it's like, look, you know, I, I don't mean to uh, rain on anybody's parade or burst anybody's bubble here, but look, these. These events, for the most part, because of the way the Sharks have set them up over the last few years, they've basically become events where you pay to get stuff signed. That's Unfortunately, that's what it's become. I had so much more fun when they had the, I remember Sharks Fest in like, I don't know, 99 or somewhere in there, 2000, where the entire tank was open you could and and they had a stage set up where that you know randy was up there talking with people or dan ruzanowski was up there talking with people and they do quick hits 
uh, they, if I remember correctly, like at one point they played like some sort of like guessing game or there was some, there was some sort of, they tried to make it kind of like a game show. Yeah. They kind of had could, a jeopardy of sorts or some trivia. Yeah. Game. It's something like that. Uh, I mean, I played bubble hockey with Owen Nolan. Uh, they had a, I remember they had a patch of like in the corner, they had a patch of the ice exposed and they had a, a couple of kids from San Jose state that were goalies that you could take like three shots against. Uh, you know, it, it was very interactive and, Unfortunately, the fan fest has it's really just nothing more than here, you know, take my 25 bucks so I can spend five hours or four hours, however long it is. But I can spend four hours in line, you know, <laughs> to to get a couple things signed and then go home. I mean, that's literally what it's become. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that. I think there's probably a way to find a, a, a happy medium. But, you know, it's because if memory serves, it was like they had Sharks you know, two seasons ago when they had the last legit Sharks Fest. It was them sitting on chairs, you know, for, for half a day signing stuff. Mm -hmm. Some of the guys – and I get it. I'm not, I'm not like, coming down on any of them. But, you know, some of the guys just not even looking up. They're just, you know, they're just waiting for somebody to put something in front of them so they can sign it. And then they just pass it on and, you know, wait for the next one. Um, but then the very next night was the, like the season ticket holder, what, you know, the, 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 the schnazzy one that they do, <laughs> right? you know? So I don't know. It's, and that's where you, we remind you, you joined the sharks 365. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Oh boy. So, so, so the, I guarantee, well, Stanley's is still called Stanley's. I was ready to go. Okay, it's called Calder's for now. Until insert booze company here decides to throw <laughs> some money at them. Hey, I I hear the Juno Lounge is no longer the Juno Lounge of the Shark Tank, so uh, they they <sighs> can take that. Can we not? <laughs> I'm just I'm so I'm so fed up. With with all the 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 advertising, you know, I was watching the Giants game earlier tonight before we went on. It's to the point, like these last few games, it, it's it's like every third thing Javi Lopez says is an advertisement for something. You know, when they have a meeting on the mound, for Christ's sakes, it's sponsored. Yeah, you know, or there's time I've even like in between pitches because they know in between each pitch takes about mm, 30, 40 seconds. They'll crowbar an ad in there. That's, you know, a 25 second ad and it's just enough already. Uh, it just all these sponsored things. And then, uh, you know, I don't think we've talked about it, but the idea that the, the NHL is going to add patches now to jerseys mm. and John Scott talked about it on his podcast where he's like telling everybody that, dude, this is not the end. This is just the, the beginning. beginning. It's uh, literally the Jersey that you are wearing has an advertisement yeah. patch on. So you've and got this is, that. This is literally, you know, this is the jersey I designed for the Barracuda, but this is pretty pretty much the size, the full size that they could go with for the patch. Yeah. And this that's, is like a little bit over, this might be actually a little over four inches. So it might yeah, be a so little bit more. Yeah, so that's too big. That's too big. But, but still. It's still ridiculous because, uh, first off, it was, like, I understand, when they added it to the helmets, it made sense because COVID. And in fact, if for last season, if they had put it on jerseys just for last yeah. season because there were no fans, I would have said, fine, you know, mm -hmm. for that one particular season. Absolutely. Because there's no fans in the stands. But, you know, Scott was talking about, he goes, you watch. They, they're they going to condition the fans to accept this. Then the next will be ads on the, on the shorts, on the breezers. Yep. You know, and then it's going to be, and then pretty soon, we're going to look like a European league yeah, and it's just going to be a shit show. It's going to be a circus. And it's like, when is enough enough? And the, the thing that I got such a, uh, that I was kind of laughing at <laughs> is the fact that it's okay for, you know, not to mention the fact that Bettman was clearly uh, talking out of his ass uh, when Sportico broke the news that they were going to add these advertisements to NHL jerseys because 
when the helmet ads came out, it was, oh, it's for one season only. We all knew that was bullshit. Because uh, this is the same Batman that in 2015 said, you will have to kick me kicking and screaming to permit Jersey ads. And yet here we are. Um, and then, of course, you have one group of fans that sit there and go, well, what's the big deal? It's a tiny patch. You probably won't even notice it after the third game. Well, I, I'm sure the companies that are paying millions of dollars love hearing that that no one's going to notice the ad that they're placing for millions and millions of dollars. But the thing is, well, if no one's noticing, then what the hell is the point of putting it on? Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I get what they're doing is that it, they're trying to make up for the lost space. But the thing is, is that it's not, not just the Jersey patches, not this season, but next season, but two seasons ago is when they put it behind the trapezoids. Yeah, they yeah. threw yeah, they threw the ads on the trapezoid. To me, I liken it to um some of the bridges that were you know, we were all told at one point that after uh like the San Mateo Bridge or the Dumbarton Bridge or whatever that it's like there will be a toll on At home was a far, far cheaper option. Yeah. And maybe during that time they said, hey, we're saving all this money on not going to games. Maybe we should go out and get an 80 inch flat panel, you know, some really sick TV. Right. And then all of a sudden it's like, maybe we don't need to go to games anymore. Maybe the home experience is just, you know, is enough for us. Well, and that's the concern that everybody's had with the NFL is that the home experience has become a lot better, especially with NFL red zone and an NFL fantasy stats channel, you know, and especially with betting now, you know, becoming a norm. So oh, I guess you must have hit. I something. must have hit something. Yeah. I hit something and it went to, sh you know, back. But, you know, my what my point is, is that what's next? You know, we've been doing jersey patches, then breezers patches, then advertising, you know, you know, all over the place. Like what I was posting was this. I mean, is, is that the next thing? Yes. I mean, where else? What else are we going to put in there? I mean. Like seriously, well, the, here's, I mean, <laughs> look, it's like, Hey, this is awesome. Right. Means more revenue for the owners, which means ticket and beer prices are going to stay the same. Right. Oh no. Oh, well clearly I don't care if I'm already paying 1650 for, you know, an eight ounce beer from a tap. So adding jerseys, uh, the ads that doesn't suck at all. Uh, well, no, actually it blows. It's not enough that I walk into a building with naming rights sponsorship under, you know, a big SAP sign to grab a beer at the Mars Vodka Bar after walking by the BMW Lounge, you know, to watch a game so literally surrounded in advertisements. You know, at, like at what point do we sell like the space on the player's ass? <laughs> you know, put Juicy on there. Juicy Couture, <laughs> that was, right? <laughs> Because who doesn't love juicy shorts? But I mean, Jesus Christ, you know. Because and no one will care, point. right? By the third game, it's just. I mean, when do we get to the point where it's like, I'm sorry, you need to watch a 30 second ad before you're allowed to go in and take a piss. I mean, come on. I I I. It's like I guarantee you, the they got app. SAP got rid of the smoking sections outside because there wasn't a way to sell advertising out there. <laughs> that's oh, why that's they got right. Rid. I forgot about that, that they that they took those smoke. Oh, boy. Yeah, there's no more smoking section. You know, that it's like you used to be able to do it out of any door. And then, like, within the course of, like, nine months, it was, okay, you can do it off this section and out the front door, and that's it. And then it was, okay, now we've shut off all the side exits. You can do it 
out the you know the the front entrance the Santa Clara Street entrance right but it doesn't open until after the puck is dropped right and then it was just like they keep uh, you know and I it's look I get it you know smoking you know not good for you I get it but you know when you're going to they're going to be people that run into a bathroom and spark one up real quick to get their little fix that, you know, people will do that when you, you know, when you take away their one thing, you're, they're going to find a way around it. Yeah. I'm just saying. Hey. So we'll, we'll see what, we'll see how that goes. And, and there might be some guys that go, Oh, you know, screw it. I, I, I loved going to games, but you know what the, you know, I need, you know, daddy needs his, you know, his nicotine, you know, once in a while. And, if they're not going to provide me a space to do that, then I'm not going to go to a game. The the other thing, too, is you wonder if they'll just start vaping in the crowd. True that. You know. I didn't think, of, yeah, or electronic cigarettes or something, you know. But Who knows? But here's here's the other thing, though, AJ. How will you vape if you have to have a mask on? As we've as well, we've the, seen the today. same way that you eat when you still have to wear a mask, you move it real quickly, take your food, take your drink or whatever, and then put it back. Yeah, but you got to puff. So you leave it off until you're done puffing. I, I mean, look, I'm just saying we'll see how that how that goes. But it's just one more thing. Yeah. I just. <laughs> oh, I want to know. Uh, th- there's so many things that I have on my list for uh, <laughs> Becker. For, no, for the Pucknologist. Oh. And it's like I feel like hey, you might as well just get through some of these now because <laughs> by the time we do our next show. It's, you know, some of these things will potentially be answered or it'll be different, but. All right. Call a pocky trick right now. No, nah, he, I'm <laughs> sure he's busy. He's probably sleeping. I get uh, the thing that got me though, is uh, the article from the athletic this week from uh, Dom mm-hmm. that the That's annual awesome. front office confidence poll had the sharks 31st out of 32nd. And my favorite comment on the whole thing was like, how are they not dead last? And then I realized, oh yeah, we still have the Sabres in the NHL. That's why. <laughs> like that was hysterical. But, but they thirty first out of thirty second. Yikes. I mean, that being said, don't you feel a little bit better about the development system? I feel better. Uh, I mean, I definitely feel. I feel like Doug Wilson Jr. should have been given the reins from Tim Burke about five years before he actually got him. You right. I mean, it makes me wonder where we would actually <laughs> be. But, um, you know, look, even the, even Doug Wilson Jr. was like surprised as shit that Eklund fell to, to as far down as he did. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you can't give him too much credit for getting lucky. You know, it's like if you fall into a river that just happens to have, you know, pieces of gold coin in it, you know. So it's, I mean, I, I like that part of it, but fact of the matter is it's like, yeah, okay. Your pipeline is rated top five. Your contract efficiency is 32nd. Right. So, you know, it's like you still have minimum five more years, you know, of Couture and Carlson and Kane. Uh, you know, and to a lesser extent, Burns, what is only four years left, right? Right. But either way, you you've you've got a lot of time to wait. You can, you know, unless <laughs> I don't know. I, I I got the feeling that Couture seemed to be the one, and and I'm not the only one who feels that way. But it kind of had this vibe that Couture seems to be one of the main guys that has an issue with Kane. What if Couture came to Wilson's office and said, "Hey, him or me? Like, if you if you if you can't move him, then we need to work out a deal to move me." Mm. You know, what if that was to happen? I mean, it gets some money off your books, but then again, it's like, Jesus Christ, can anybody like like can we not keep a captain on this team for a little while? It's kind of like the Montreal Canadiens of the '90s. Carboneau gets traded. Uh, you know. Vinny Domfus gets traded to the Sharks. I think you know, they they go through like Pierre Turgeon. I think was traded to St. Louis, I and mean, they that's that's the thing, it, and that's and that's a nightmare to, to deal with because then there's a little bit of like, uh oh, 
Are we, are we starting to turn into Columbus where we can't hang on to any players? Right. You know, uh, Pete- well, it's, you can't, it, it's at this point, And I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but at this point, uh, if the sharks who right now are projected, what I think to finish, you know, by, by the odds with Vegas, what 66 to one was the last time I checked. Mm-hmm. And that put them, I think at about 28th, maybe 27th. That's where they're projected to finish out of the 32, which, you know, for those of you playing at home means no playoffs, third straight year. Now, I don't have a problem with that if they uh, trade Tomas Hurdle. You know, I love Hurdle, love Hurdle to death, my favorite player on the team. But he could potentially bring you back a King's Ransom. Like, it's not going to be the same that Ottawa got for Carlson. Right. But he will, he should bring back a pretty solid return and yeah i'm kind of like look i th- <laughs> you you don't want to call it a rebuild fine reset retool re this re that i mean it's it's so stupid because we don't we don't want to use the rebuild word look what you're doing it's it's almost worse than rebuilding in my opinion you know so you you you're married to these contracts you who knows what the hell's going to happen with with the whole Kane situation? Yeah. But you've already got the dead money with with Jones, for that's another six years. So it's, I don't know. You look at the, it's you, you've got these little pieces like you've got Balsers, you've got Barabanov, mm-hmm. you've got Hurdle. Like there's some nice pieces that you could have to build around, but you know, I I look at the youth. Of like you were all these guys that are between like I don't know what twenty and twenty three twenty four. Yeah. Ooh, you look at them in three or four years, they could just be you know cracking in. I mean, because I mean cracking. Gambrell, yeah, but Gambrell just turned thirty five or twenty five, but younger than him. I mean, I think Gregor's around that that age group. But I mean, these pieces that you have in the pipeline, and then of course you've got. Ferraro needs to be the shoe in for the future captain. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, you, you're not going to give it to, I, I mean, if you haven't given it to Vlasic by now, he's never getting it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I don't know. I just, I let's look, stranger things have happened. Kids, the, the giants, the San Francisco giants, I think were projected to win like 72 games total this year. Right. And they, I think they just won their 83rd tonight, mm-hmm. and there's still like 40 something left, or 50, or whatever the hell the number is. Man, so can't, it's can't get there's any wiggle room with the Dodgers. Yeah, but but the fact of the matter is that the Giants were projected to do far worse than they're doing. They're shocking the hell out of people. And who is it that is shocking people the most? The veterans. Yeah. The Crawford, the Posey. Absolutely. So. Maybe with some extended time off that the, you know, that the, maybe the Sharks have had some time to collect themselves, mm-hmm. bounce back. Maybe we see bounce back years from LeBanc and Meyer and Eric goddamn Carlson. Now talk about a guy who better fucking bounce back. Oh, um, yeah. Vlasic, um, you know, I mean, hell, just about everybody on this team. So, look, if they all bounce back and they somehow come together. You know, maybe they all come together with it's like, yeah, fuck Kane, man. Like we're all gonna come together just to piss off Kane. <laughs> I don't whatever it is that like brings the group together, I'm fine with it. Um, but the, they need to do something. But it, you know, if, if we're coming up on the trade deadline, or where you know we're we're coming up on uh, what like usually, well, obviously the schedule's a little different this year. But where's where's my uh, where's my schedule? So. For the 15th, we come up to January 15th. That's the halfway marker. If the Sharks aren't, you know, if they're not at least in the top three in their div, mm-hmm. I mean, poof, it's going to be tough because remember this, the, the Sharks schedule, it's very division heavy in the second half. Right. So if if they put themselves in a hole early and they don't bank they you know they can't bank a whole lot of points in their division. So if they don't do if if it comes up on the January 15th or 
I mean, yeah, January 15th. You get there, woof. If if the sharks aren't in it, boom. You know, I think you need to start doing what you can to just say, okay, <laughs> like if you miss the playoffs third three straight years for the first time, for the first time ever, yeah, and you're still refusing to use the word rebuild, <laughs> you need to get fired. Like I, I believe in Doug Wilson. He's done some amazing shit, but if you can't say the word rebuild after missing for three straight years, then get the fuck out. Yeah. Like I'm so, I'm sorry to be so direct, but I'm just so tired of the you know, oh, we can't use this word. We can't use this word. Oh, shut up. Ugh. With that, uh we'll go to the chat because there's been a lot of chat about that. PJ saying, you know, 31st is a stretch. I wonder what some of you people would have thought in 91, 92. I do. I, to a certain point, I do think 31 is a stretch. But remember, this was a poll of Sharks fans and then hockey fans in general. And from a 30,000 foot level, you know, when you're not watching these games and you're not as invested as we all are. Right. You are probably just looking at it from the outside. You just look on cap friendly and see Couture and Carlson and Vlasic and Burns and go, holy shit, what a clusterfuck that is. Mm -hmm. They must suck. And then you would just, you know, say, yeah, no confidence all the way down. It would be, it's just like, I have no idea what the hell's going on in Buffalo. I don't watch, (laughs) you know, I'm not invested. I I just know they suck, you know, (laughs) same thing with Arizona. But here's the fucked up thing. San Jose was rated worse in a front office confidence poll. Right than a team who literally their front office lost their fucking draft pick for violating policies in the combine. Like how bad do you have to suck when that team does better than you? And it's on, and it doesn't have a home for next season. Yeah. Like how bad does your reputation, how bad is it taking a hit? But who knows that how much of that was driven because when that poll went out, is right around it was like just after all the stuff with Kane's wife happened. So that may have also played a part yeah. in having a negative impact on the fan, you know, just the reputation of the Sharks at large. Yes. But whew, so who no one one of the suggestions that's going on through and I think it started with Sharks fan 27 uh, I say bring back the mini blimps that used to fly around the arena during dropping Chipotle coupons on the fans. Uh, Never going to happen. Uh, we've, we've explained it before, but I'll do it again. Go ahead. Um, the the Sharks, uh, there are insurance issues, basically, that if if some idiot, because every fan base has them, I mean, Philly might have a little more, but every <laughs> fan base has them, there's going to be some moron who, like, you know, fires a slingshot or whatever and the thing falls or, you know, or something breaks down, something mechanical goes wrong. Either way, it falls out of the air. It lands on somebody's head, breaks their nose or give it, you know, some injures somebody, the insurance that they have to, that they have to cover on that. It's ridiculous. It's like, no, no, no. Just like wrap the, um, the, the food coupons or whatever in with a t-shirt, fire the shirts and, you know, out of a cannon into the crowd or toss them around with the, with the tank patrol and, and you're fine. I believe me. I loved air shark, loved me some air shark, but that's yeah, it's, it's all based on insurance. That's why you're not seeing that. Yep. It's a bummer because those were awesome. But, um, even the one, the smaller ones, they came out that, uh, one year, but yeah, it's, it's a liability issue. That's more, more so than anything. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> Kathy saying reset is the new rebuild. Uh, PJ, a lot of the projections from the advanced stats are based on prior data. Balsers and Barabanov, if they kept clicking on those top two lines, that isn't going to show up in the predictions. Yeah, but and and I do agree with that. However, you know, the, <laughs> does anybody really think it's realistic that Barabanov is going to keep up that pace? You know, what was it like seven points in nine games? Yeah. I mean, that that was ridiculous. Like Balsers, I have a little more faith in. I felt like, you know, he got a longer look. Barabanov, will he, you know, come flying out of the gate like he did over those nine games? I mean, I would love to see it. If it, but, if it is, it's a great steal for Suamella. Yeah. But 
how often have you ever seen that? I mean, how many times have we seen someone come in, f- you know, look great for a few games and then completely unsustainable? Hello, Radil. You know, uh, Radil had a Brian stretch a couple weeks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, h- hold on. Did you say Brian Campbell? Yeah. Yeah, but see, the but the difference is Brian Campbell was a proven commodity when he came in. Radil yeah, but- and Barabanov, for the most part, Unproven commodity. No, that's true, but he showed up with with such flair, and that we were expecting a spinorama every game now, and, and then he went dark during you know when it mattered yeah, I think, most. I think Belfour and Campbell are things that those you could com- <laughs> be comparables. Like a lot, expe- they came in with a reputation. A lot was expected. They you know had a couple small things here, but for the most part, they flamed out, and then they were gone. Uh, for me, yeah, Barabanov and um, who was the cat that I mentioned? Balsers? No, no, no. The one that I compared Barabanov to. Oh, Radil. Yeah. So those two, yeah, I think that's a bit more comparable. So will Barabanov be another Radil? Yeah. I hope not. You know, love to see, <laughs> love to see something go the shark's way. For once. Yeah. And then, and when we were talking about the, uh, the blimps and like I'd said, we, we've talked about this before, but I understand now everybody watches every show or some of you might just be finding out about us. That's cool. Um, and that's what the chat's for. You got a question? Ask it. Yeah. Uh, because I will tell you, man, sharks, Facebook. Oh my God. God. Uh, Just like, no, stop, please stop. If, If you like, if you're going there, just. It's, it's, I mean, it's almost like you're dying to be misinformed. The last, what was it, last week? Uh, yeah, the 21st and 22nd, like this last Friday or Saturday or whatever the hell it was, last weekend, the city of San Jose officially changed the signage, changed the name from Autumn, which is, you know, SAP centers at the corner of Santa Clara Street in Autumn. They officially changed it from Autumn to Barack Obama Boulevard. And because of the world we now live in, a bunch of people logged into social media to whine and bitch and moan and complain about it. However, if you had listened to episode 113, just to let you know, we're doing episode 136 here in a couple months. This is 113 from last December of 2020. We told you this was happening. It was reported in the Mercury News back then, and you wouldn't have been so shocked about it. Uh, but for those of uh, for those people that were clutching their pearls over the street being named after Obama, uh, don't visit Willow Glen. I'm just, you know, because you you're gonna drive on streets that are like named Lincoln or Hamilton or Coolidge <laughs> or Garfield. Uh, I mean, it's not as if the United States doesn't have a ton of schools and airports or cities named after former right. presidents. Oh, it's, oh, wait, no, they do. So to quote jerk. Stop crying. You didn't like Obama. Big fucking deal. You know, you didn't. I did. I wasn't a big fan of Reagan's, but there, I didn't bitch and moan because an airport na- got named after the guy. Like right. there are bigger fucking things to worry about. Yeah. Stop crying. Gr- granted, as Sharks underscore fan 27 says, George Gund Avenue would have been nice. Oh, dude. The, here's the thing that really gets me about that. They didn't even they didn't even talk to the Sharks like the city and the Sharks that it was just like. They woke up one day and, and like looked outside SAP and they was like, what? When did this happen? <laughs> like the, the fact that they weren't even consulted, I think, is ridiculous. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that it's like there's literally a million streets in San Jose. Like you could have picked any other street. You could have changed, you know, if if you look at a lot of major cities, not every city has a first street. A lot of street have second or third or fourth, but not everyone has first street because it can get renamed to main street, broad street, Broadway that, you know, it comes up with whatever the main thoroughfare name is. They could have renamed first street, uh, you know, Obama street or whatever. I mean, there, there were, let's just say San Jose was not lacking in options. It is, uh, at least from, from, from my point of view, no, it, it, this is a bad look for the city of San Jose. Like that, that's a, that's a screw up. Like they should have renamed Stockton street, you know, Stockton Avenue right there at, at whole foods name that one Obama. But it's like, if you're going to rename autumn, 
you name that, you, you know, you change the address of SAP to, you know, 1668 Marlowe Avenue, you know, or 1768, whatever the hell the number is. Right. <laughs> you know, you change the address to that, you know, call it Marlowe Avenue. It, it, it's you, you really only have a couple options. You you name it after Marlowe or you name it after Gund. I mean, that, that's that's kind of it. Uh, Pretty much. yeah, unless Plotner wants to pay to have it repaved, then we can call it Plotner way for all like, or, or, well, I mean, Google's about to take it over, you know, Google, did Google, and funny, I say this, did Google have something to do with the name change Sharks fan 27 saying, you know, not I that I, know of... I didn't see anything about that in the initial reports. Yeah. So I don't believe so. Uh, Felix, uh, one on the in the chat really quick. Uh, we'll get to this. My main concern is what everyone else it, else's is. How much more is uh, of this cane situation is going to deteriorate the Sharks on ice play? You know, and, and of course, how much more fucked is the team locker room chemistry going to be? You know? I think it depends on how many players actually have a problem with the guy. I mean, based on everything that we've seen so far, Timo seems to be his boy. Right. Um, uh, Based on just tweets that we've seen, body language, I, I don't think Couture and Kane are boys. Uh, I would imagine that Couture, you know, I'm and I'm just speculating, which I know you should never do, <laughs> but the question was asked. Uh, I would I would say Couture might have an issue. Um, I mean, you would think that it's got to be vets on the team that would have an issue because. What what were what was reported was that guys were tilted because Chief was like, you know, not not up to dress code. He's showing up late for stuff, and you know, a Noah Gregor is not going to be complaining about. It. He's gonna, you know, he's just dying for ice time. Right. You know, a, a Kanijov, I can't imagine is going to be vocal about something like this. It's it's going to be leadership guys. Yeah, so, it's gonna be. It's going to be like, or, or guys have been there as veterans. Yeah. You know, like that's Vlasic. what I'm saying. Yeah. Vlasic couture. I could easily see them having an issue now, even if, you know, let's say that the in, in you know, the quote unquote investigation, uh, into the, the gambling assertions made by his, uh, soon to be ex-wife, um, Let's say that those are that you know no evidence is found to support her claim. So he's clear to that he can still play. Now, does it mean that he uh, <laughs> that the black cloud is lifted? I mean, it, dude's still bankrupt, right? Right. House is still on the market right now. Yay! So, you know, dude, dude has personal problems. Unfortunately, I hope he gets through them. I you know, I hope he he can you know find redemption somehow. But. I mean, this is, you know, this, <laughs> we've seen this story before. This is not new. Right. And that's what, that's what worries me. And, you know, Jerk has said, you know, how, how do you, how do you make the play to get rid of the guy who scored the most point, you know, put up the most goals, was the most consistent all season right. long, which is impressive when you consider all the off ice crap that is going on in his life. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough. But then again, to to kind of give the opposite opinion from jerk there where it's like you know how do you how do you sell it to the fan base to get rid of the guy who is actually the only one who's scoring consistently well if it's if he's then if he's so great to have why can't Doug Wilson find anybody to take him you know like points you know points matter you need guys that can score yeah. But you, you know, there's, uh, you know, not everybody wants La Flemme on their team. If you've ever seen the movie Goon, <laughs> you know, not when not not when they're not in the right headspace. Right. So. All right. Oh, and then finally, for anybody watching that wants to uh, has interest in going to a game. Remember, the uh, Sharks announced that in compliance with the city. Uh, effective separate September 20th, anyone 12 or older who goes to SAP or Sharks Ice uh, will be required to show proof of vaccination upon entry. 18 and over will need a clear, that's capital C-L-E-A-R because it's an app, 
You'll need a clear health pass or provide physical proof. However, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, maybe your physical proof scrutinized a scotch more than using the clear app. Because, I mean, how many things have we already seen in the news already of people being uh, arrested, jailed, incarcerated, whatever you want to say, because they were found to be using fake vax cards? Which, to me, I, I find kind of funny because the effort that it takes to get a fake vax card versus just getting a shot. <laughs> Whatever. My only bitch about this is, can we do this today? Like, why are we waiting a month to implement this? Like, let's do think, it now. How many events are there? There's like three or four events before. Yeah, September yeah what is 20th. it? It's like, well, Guns N' Roses was last night. Right. Uh, I think Simone Biles is doing some gymnastics thing. Mm -hmm. And there's like maybe one or two other. Monster Jam. Yeah, something silly like that. Um, but still, I just, I, I still don't get it. I don't understand why you're like waiting a month. I mean, I, I, it makes sense in a, in a way that, you know, they can, they need to get the parameters set up. Will they set up the rapid COVID test like they had when they had fans back at the very end of last season? You know, will they, I do didn't see any like mention of that. It's basically, they're putting it on, they're putting the onus on the people that want to come into the building. It's like, if you want to come in, prove you're vaxxed. If you, you know, and if you can't, bye bye Yeah. The, um. They say that there's a, there is the SAP Center Fair. Uh, that's that's outside. That's outside though. Yeah, it's in the parking lot. Okay, and then Monster Jam, September third through the fifth, uh, Malaluma, uh, the ninth, uh, the Lo Los Angeles Azules. Uh, Monster Jam. September. You'll pay for the entire seat, but you'll only use the edge. There's only two reasons to be here. If you're jail or you're dead. If you jail, break out. This Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I just don't get that, but whatever. <laughs> uh, Bellator on September 18th. And then by then, the gold, you know, the Simone Biles gymnastics tour is on the 26th. So. Oh, okay. So that's the first event that will require that'll, yeah, this. Yeah, that'll be that. And then all of the Sharks events there. And don't forget that the. Uh, Arena football team is coming in March as well. So, <laughs> oh boy. So, is it the same? Is it like nets? You know, the the ridiculously narrow field goal thing with the two nets hanging. Like, is it going to be? Is it basically the same thing as Sabercats? You, you're not going to have the two big nets on the side. You're just going to have the skinny the skinny goal post. The, oh, so if they kick it into the stand, you get a free ball. Yeah. Uh, nice. be believe it or not, those big nets are actually patented by whoever has the patent to the Arena Football League. <laughs> nice. So, oh, oh, and so looking in here, September twenty eighth is the first exhibition game for the Sharks at home. So, yeah, interesting, interesting, interesting. But what so. if what if you are a season ticket holder and you're not wanting to do any of this? It, plus, you're wearing a mask. Then, then the whole thing is, uh, if you want to keep your season tickets, then uh, the the sharks need to work out some sort of a way that they can defer. Like, okay, well, then if that's the case, we're going to sell your tickets to somebody else this season. Yeah. Or, hey, you know what? No, I'm tired of that. I'm tired of. A large, the the majority of people being screwed by a minority of of people that don't believe in science. Or do, I mean, some of the the excuses that I've heard are so ri ridiculous. Like, look, if you don't want to get the vax, I just tell, give me a solid reason. You know, give me one that's that's supported by science. You know, don't sit there and like try to stick a magnet on your shoulder and, you know, <laughs> hoping that it sticks things. Oh, I'm magnetized. I have 5G now. I've got full bars all of a sudden because of my vaccinated. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, I give me a scientific reason. If you want to sit there and say, well, it's not fully approved from the FDA yet. Yeah, actually, no, Pfizer, it is. It has been approved. 
I, I have two bars right now, and I'm fully vaccinated. See? Yeah. So, Granted, so, I have an AOL tonight, though. Yeah. But so my, my point being is like if you're a season ticket holder and you're an anti-vaxxer, okay, fine. Then, then hey, thanks for being a season ticket holder. You aren't one anymore. <laughs> you know, or if you want to be a continue to be a season ticket holder, you can be. But anybody who uses your tickets is going to be double vaxxed. That simple. You know, so that'll don't be like it. Bye bye. That'll be interesting to see what happens uh, when we get to the preseason opener and definitely the home opener on October 16th. Mm hmm. Who's Sharks fan 27 anyway? Is that Mitch? Nope. Oh, okay. Because I thought that I thought isn't that Mitch's username on Reddit? No. Something close I think like it's that. Hockey oh. Jersey. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Or well, I, I, there's, there's somebody on no 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 no. I think you're right about hockey jersey, but there's somebody Sharks fan twenty seven on Reddit. I can't remember who, but they the they're in a lot of uh, good conversations. Yeah. I see that name on there a lot. Uh, oh, good job, Sharks fan twenty seven. Yeah, no, I'm I've been fully vaxxed since uh, the like middle of May. So yeah. could could not wait. Yeah. And and one of the reasons why I'm not on camera right now is because I actually had a surgical procedure last week. So uh, I don't feel like showing off the the bandage on my on my forehead right now. So <laughs> and you can save your lobotomy jokes because I've heard them all already. Oh, geez. No, that's funny because you... my friends are that nice. That's so sweet of them. Uh, no, you, I know you you've you're recovering from yours. I, I get to do a procedure next week. Which is going to be fun uh, on my back. So. Oh, oh! I thought they were going to teach you how to eat a mic. Are you eating a mic? That's what I'm saying. Monster Jam this Sunday. Yeah, see, Justin making the perfect point. Like, wouldn't getting 5G, like getting better, <laughs> wouldn't that have been like a oh, great geez. like side effect? Like, I think that would have been awesome. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not going to get COVID and I'm going to get better cell reception? Yeah. Sign me up. Yeah. And granted, I, I I get some people don't feel comfortable with it. Oh, Justin, why'd you delete that? Come on, it was funny. <laughs> Thank you, Sharks fan twenty seven. I I I hope you should see what the hell was cut out of me. I'm telling you. Oh boy, I should I should post that on my on my Instagram. In fact, you, you haven't. Know what? I, I'm, oh, dude, dude, have you not seen the? Did I not show you the photo? You, I saw it on Facebook. Spoiler. Oh, that's right. I did. Yeah. Okay. I posted it on Facebook. Like, yeah, but see, crap. I have, and not to, uh, not to, not to sound like a, you know, narcissistic, twat waffle, but, uh, you know, I have different. Let's just put it with this way. I there's a group of people that I know that follow me on Twitter and a group of people that follow me on Facebook, and never the twain shall meet. So there's certain things that I will post on one platform that I won't post on the other, and vice versa, because I'm aware of the audience. <laughs> there, there's a there's a few different people that are, let me put it this way I have a lot more uh, or I have family following me on Facebook but not on Twitter or Insta so that's why I'll share certain things like that but yeah no dude yeah I, I'll I'll oh. post that up on Insta if okay look my Insta is at AJ underscore strong I'm posting it right now if you if you want to take a little look see at it, what it can, what the hell came out it, of me. it can be a little graphic. Oh, please! You, you watch just, an episode of Grey's Anatomy and see ten times worse. Or Doctor Pimple Popper. <laughs> yeah, any of that stuff. But I mean, you kind of hit it a little bit with your hair, which is you know lucky you got yeah. sweet flow. But but the thing is, uh, I'm tired of having the same haircut. <laughs> oh really? Dude, that was part of it. Like I was always pulling that side down. Because I didn't, you know, I did. It's like, look, if people see it, big fucking deal. They, what, what, you know, like what happened? I'd be like, uh, yeah, well, basically it's a, you know, it's a small benign tumor is what it was. It's like basically a fat deposit or whatever, you know, different. Some people get them, some people don't, but, uh, it is what it is, but I got tired of it. You know, it, cause it was essentially cosmetic. It was, you know, it was nothing medically it wasn't causing any medical issues. Really? But anyway, 
Yeah. So just, I just, the only thing that it, it, it would make wearing a ball cap irritating after about a half an hour for some reason. I don't know why. Wow. But, um, yeah. So I just, wow. I got tired of it. Yeah. I got, I got sick of dealing with it. So I'm like, yeah, let's just cut this shit out because I'm tired of it. But I look, I've got a, I've got a really cool scar right now. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that will, will fade with time. Um, but yeah, and I'll finally be able to get a new fucking haircut if I want. <laughs> Can actually comb my hair the other way. <laughs> you have to train it though. You have to like. Oh, dude, believe when I when my hair was like past my back. Believe me, my hair is in order. It's very trained. Why don't, why don't you just just let the flow go though? They're all. Like, I've been thinking about it, dude. But uh, dude, I had long hair for nearly twenty years, and when we got what. Seven, my seventh or eighth month of not having a haircut because of oh, COVID, yeah. uh, and you know, and by that time, well, hell, I think my my last haircut is, was like January of 2020. Like I literally had a haircut set for like a the the week after COVID thing, and like my hairstylist shut shit down. Yeah, so. You know, I went for probably like eight or nine months with that haircut, and I was, I, I, I was like, I can't, I don't know how I did this for twenty years, and it was, you know, three times as long. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. But you know, the last, you, you might want to just like edit out the last twenty minutes of this because I know <laughs> this is just us talking to each other. Like, I guarantee you, people we are saved so it for the Discord, but that's all right. by, Yeah, we should have just went to Discord, but people, I guarantee you, people are going to be listening to this. And they're going to be like, what the fuck are these guys talking they're, about? They're, we're just, hey, this is what happens when it's August 26th. The only details we have right now are that you have to show proof of vaccination or, you know, to get into the Shark Tank. And, and oh, by the I, way. I will tell you the promotional calendar for the Sharks was finally not not necessarily updated. Oh. It's, it's that for the longest time. They still had the the photo of Marlowe in the Heritage jersey, and it was saying the last two games were Heritage nights or whatever. And they finally removed that. Oh, they haven't shown it. So now it's just it's it's just check back later for more information. And oh, and we know unfortunately the Sharks up. have a long storied history of being like the last team to announce stuff. Dang it. So. Well, the, you also have to realize too, dude, is that they've the individual tickets are on sale, and they have to gauge their ticket sales and go, okay, so let's see here. Well, for some godforsaken reason, we can't understand why, but Tuesday versus Arizona just isn't selling. Uh, so maybe we want to, you know, give away a bobblehead, or we need to do some sort of thing to goose sure. sales. So I'm sure that they're, they're looking at that. Yeah, they're very limited. Yeah, tickets no, it's, available sorry, right Felix. Now. Sorry, Felix. Yeah, definitely more of a Discord one-on-one -on -one chat versus like, <laughs> hey, enjoy what we're doing here. It's always sharks related. Sorry, we went off on a tangent, but that's that's all it's right. what happens when we haven't done a show in a while and we're like kind of catching up. Yep. We we kind of. We kind of leaned a little Howard Stern there towards the end where they just start talking about personal shit and, you know, damn the audience. <laughs> you know, who, the, the audience has heard everything they need to. Now it's whatever. That sucks that you're going to have to edit this all out for MP3. <laughs> Me? <laughs> <laughs> Me? Good luck, motherfucker. I'm not doing dick until October. Oh, whatever. I told you, man, my focus is on my jerseys. Speaking of which, <laughs> I think I'm supposed to see Chief on Monday. Nice. With any luck. Do some pickup. Do some send out. Oh. Uh, a clarification here from Sharks Fan 27. Why do you know, do you need both vaccines to get in? And I believe he, yeah, it is yeah. both. Yeah, no, you got to be double vaccinated. Yeah. Need so. that double double. It's like In N Out Burger up in here. I could go for In N Out right now. Shoot. Bargain in. All right. Well, with that, we'll get <laughs> out of here. In case you missed anything, you want to watch this again, check us out on TealTownUSA.com. Nobody's going to watch this again, but go ahead. Yes, they will. If you notice our likes, our, our our views have gone up a lot lately. Well, uh, they have, but nobody wants to sit there and go, "Oh, where's the episode where AJ was talking about his tumor?" Yeah, nobody nobody's gonna care. He doesn't have a tumor anymore. 
Oh, uh, yeah. You're like the 18th person to do that. Go ahead. <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Of course, hit that subscribe button on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and of course, always available at TealTownUSA.com. So with that, we'll bring it to a close on the on this very special hour, 40-minute edition of Teal Town Live. Uh, AJ, your final thoughts and where the people can find you. Uh, they're not going to be able to find me on YouTube for about a month and a half, but, uh, if they want to, uh, find me anywhere else, uh, you know, Twitter and Insta, that's pretty much it. Please not on Facebook. I'm trying to wean myself off that. I can't, the, 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 unless it's the shark scheme horn jerseys. Uh, Yeah. Like sharks, like some of the Jersey stuff. Yeah. But the, the sharks fan Facebook page, whatever that group is called, just do yourself a favor. If you're part of it, just leave. (laughs) I mean, the, just the, the ignorance and, and the, the silliness, uh, you know, it's like for, for every one good post, you have to like filter through 30 or 40, just ridiculous ones. It's just not worth it. It's a colossal waste of time. It's like TikTok. It's a colossal waste of time. Um, yeah, just AJ underscore strong on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to follow me, which also probably a colossal waste of your time. Oh, jeez. Um, and that's it. The only thing I can, okay. If you want to follow me on Insta, absolutely. Because I'll show you some of my Jersey projects as as they slowly, but surely plod along. (laughs) Got a couple new number kits that I posted up. So go check those out. Nice. I'm at puck guy 14 on the Twitter and the Instagram. Uh, nothing really scheduled, but if news breaks for the sharks, we will bring it to you. (laughs) If something happens with Evander Kane. Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, by the way, Joe Thornton's house still pending. Has it it's you know, do not show pending. So there it, I, I'm quite sure that it probably takes a little while longer to get through a ten million dollar home's worth of paperwork than, you know, a million dollars. But anyway. Yeah, well, you know, I'm sure you have to go through a lot of paperwork for that for sh- damn sure. Well, and I'll be interested to see how uh how quickly Evander Kane's home falls off the market. I do, I do find it interesting that uh, that Evander referred to the home that he has for sale right now in Willow Glen as the property. Like, do, how many homes do you have, bro? I don't know. It's just weird. It's weird to hear somebody rather than say, you know, the Willow Glen house versus the Richland property. I don't know. It just seemed rather odd to me, but interesting. Then again, you know, I've 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 known a couple of people like that. My I, 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 an ex girlfriend of mine, this girlfriend of mine, when I was seeing her at the time, she she you know her family had money and she lived in like Woodside in a really nice part of Woodside on the peninsula or whatever, and and we're all, you know me and Brett are hanging out and her and her friend are there and she she doesn't know where her folks are, and she's yeah. on the phone with her grandmother who like lives in a very nice part of uh, uh, Berlin, not Berlin game. Cause there's no nice parts of Berlin game. Um, a <laughs> uh, little bit for Sam, maybe San Mateo, like San Mateo Hills, but either way talking to uh, talking to, cause it had, it did her place. The, the grandmother's place did have a gorgeous view of like the Bay and the airport nice. and everything. It was really cool. But anyway, she's on the phone with her grandma. And she's like, "Do you know where mom? You know where where mom and dad are? Because like, the the uh, what was it? It was the you know the dually is still in the driveway along with, you know the Mercedes and so, you know like everything was a fucking name brand. But but the, you know but the uh, but I do see that the Harley's gone, and I'm just you know and I look over at Brett and it's like yeah and the helicopter's still on the roof so <laughs> you know." It was just like, oh my god, this, this yeah, the, the this this ain't gonna last much longer. But anywho, anywho, nice again, a nice peek. Evidently, all ideas of privacy were part of that tumor, so it's been cut out. So I'm like, yeah, open book, whatever you want to know. <laughs> and you can have a little bit more uh, <laughs> on the Discord right now. So we'll head over to Discord right now if you want to hear more about AJ's personal life and such. Uh, but until then, keep it real, keep it teal, keep it real teal. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you down the road. <laughs>